All right, welcome to the weekend video. This is Andy here, and this is bullwebs.org. Um, thanks for clicking, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to go through the markets from an LA Wave perspective. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically all about patterns. Um, so stick around, we'll go through the FX markets first, then we'll get into uh, some stock markets, some precious metals, crude oil, blah, 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 you know the deal. If you've been here before, hey, check out the website, uh, bullwebs.org, and check out what's on offer. Okay. Um, Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> no more, no more delay. This is the long-term, long-term euro-dollar count. So it's a very long sideways move, as you know. The tri triangle, the ever-present triangle. Um, I'm still expecting this uh, uh, this triangle to close out pretty well, pretty soon. You know, relatively so uh, over the next couple of months. We have a B wave, a C wave, and a D wave now pretty much complete. I'm still waiting for that move up into wave E, uh, which has not materialized. But just like everything else in this triangle, it takes forever for anything to happen. Um, so basically, euro dollar has gone nowhere for, you could call it uh, close to five years now. Six years probably, even, at this point. We've basically just gone sideways, so that's the whole thesis behind a triangle, is it just oscillate around some sort of a central kind of pivot point. Uh, well, that seems to be about 115, 116 area, and that's basically what we've done. So right now, uh, I'm expecting this uh, the final move within this triangle to begin. So uh, here's the four-hour count. You can see this is the final legs wave C of D possibility that we are in, we are done, and we have had a move up off the low. Now, just like over the last uh, the previous months, um, every single move up off the low had uh, resulted in a decline. Um, so, so far, you know, there's been nothing majorly convincing about this, but I am still working on the thesis that this uh, this will materialize into a three-wave rally up in wave E of B. So we go to the hourly count there, you can see I am looking at, that's a pretty clear five-wave move up in, in a possible wave A of A. Um, you could also view that as uh, one degree higher, but there's no point in getting into that right now. Um, wave A up, what seems to be a, a complex, you know, flat correction. Uh, wave B down, so WXY down. And well, maybe we've got the, you know, the uh, little chink of light uh, coming out this week with a reasonably impulsive move higher, possible wave one of C. So we'd expect five waves up in wave C. Um, this could be, you know, I, I suppose you could call this a, uh, a, a, an elaborate zigzag pattern. So it could be five, three, five um, up in wave A. So uh, I suppose for next week, I would expect this to continue higher. Um, I'd expect it to push towards, you know, above 115. Um, obviously, that, that recent low there at, um, at uh, excuse me, 112.21 has got a hold. Um, as long as that holds, you know, then we're we're pretty good for a. Uh, I would suspect that we are pretty good for wave C to uh, kind of materialize higher or to continue higher in five waves. So that's what that's the outlook for next week. As long as you know 112.21 holds, then we are in wave C and we should head higher. So let's see how that goes. Okay, let's move on to um, cable. Uh, we have had again a, a little. Um, let's say, not in favor of the uh, short-term count. We have had um, a reasonable move up off the low, so I think it's probably three waves up pretty much complete now. Um, I'm looking for, I'm looking at overall the four-hour count, I'm looking at a one, two, so that's a wave one down in five waves, wave up, a wave two up in, um, as an, uh, a running flat correction, and then a one, two, so it's a series of one, two patterns, uh, which should materialize uh, probably early next year uh, with a third of a third wave down. So uh, I'll be watching out for that. We've got um, the hourly count here. It looks like we've got wave A up. So we've got three waves up in wave A. And we did, I was kind of touting the the, the height of the previous um, range contraction. So this triangle pattern here, uh, we were looking at that as a, as a possible... Um, target for wave A and we pushed you know spiked up into that level just pipped above it and then fell off that so it looks like wave A is done 
Um, so far, we've dropped in three waves. So I'm looking at, uh, as, at this as a beginning of wave B. So maybe wave A down, wave B up, and wave C down. Uh, I suppose, depending on the action, maybe wave, this is going to be all of wave B. But um, we'll, give it, we'll give it some breath, and then we'll see how it goes. Uh, or, or let's say, give it some space to, to, um, to develop. Uh, we have fallen this morning just above, just back into this wave A high again. So, you know, I, I would expect we've more or less completed this wave A down and we'll probably drift sideways to higher, maybe in wave B today. Um, so it's going to be, you know, as the last month has been, it's going to be more or less the same <laughs> sideways action, get nowhere and be bogged down doing it. So this, I think this market doesn't warrant a whole lot of um, attention over the next week probably over the next week if it's going to be a B wave down to a higher low um, until we get like closing out uh, wave C again and um, the wave the kind of the top of wave two uh, becomes apparent somewhere around 135 136 and then we should probably get interested again uh, and look for a reversal down into a third wave so that's uh, next week it's going to be you know sideways to nowhere uh, how interesting that will be okay here's dollar yen this will probably be the most interesting market next week we'll see how it goes but uh, at the moment it looks like we've moved impulsively and we've corrected we've moved impulsively lower and we've corrected um higher so we have got a classic um head and shoulders pattern here three waves down um uh, impulse rally up uh, five waves down and a corrective rally up so the chances are that we are now moving down into a third wave in wave C. So the I suppose the critical level is the lower end of this neckline here. Um, if we do break below that uh, 112.50 level again, it will suggest that we are moving into a third wave down. So I would watch out for that. Let's get into the hourly count. You can see we've got five waves down and we've got a b c up in a a b c down in b and then a b c up in c so it's a triple combination wave two um they kind of uh, let's say the clincher will be on this one if we move lower in five waves to create a wave one of three and then correct higher again so it'll be a case of like a uh, a right shoulder kind of head and shoulders pattern again so we, you know Everything lies on that 112.50 level. Uh, that wave one low. If we if we break it impulsively, that will that will kind of I think lead to a bit of a waterfall moment in dollar yen, and we'll probably fall into a third of a third. Overall, the the the, the low that I'm looking at is about 107. But we, if if we do move into a third wave, we'll probably fall into about 109. Correct higher and then fall again. Um, that's the outlook. Uh, we'll see what happens. Eh. Uh, this is still the prevailing pattern, let's say. Um, I know it's, uh, it's, it's getting weaker by the minute right now, but we're still holding a lower high. So, you know, chances are still there that, uh, that we are actually, um, holding a lower high in a second wave. So this is the Dow, by the way. Um, it is interesting. It's it's just, it, we've got a very small kind of uh, let's say divergence between the big indexes now. So we've got um, solid move lower yesterday in the Nasdaq, uh, a new high in the S&P, uh, a lower high in the Dow. So we've we're kind of diverging across the, the markets right now. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see if this holds. There's only one way to know whether this is going to be correct or not, and that's if we decline again. So. Um, it does seem, uh, at least on the short-term uh, pattern, that we have uh, reversed in momentum. So obviously, that the action over the last week has been pretty, pretty sideways. Um, so we're sideways at a lower high. So if we do fall impulsively again, that will be a, a rejection at the high. So uh, don't be surprised if we spill lower uh, and maybe continue. Um, the four hour count says that we will, or four hour, sorry, momentum says that we will reverse lower again. Um, let's see the hourly, let's see the hourly count. I still think we've got a reasonable five wave pattern lower. So it's wave one, two, extension wave three, three waves up in wave four, nice spike lower in wave five. And then with three up in A, three down in B, and maybe one, two, three, four, five. We'll see how that, uh, develops today. You know, the futures, uh, early, very early futures over in the US are, well, pretty flat so far. Um, if we do move impulsively when lower when the market opens, maybe we go, maybe we, we dive down in wave one. Um, 
excuse me, too much coffee this morning. Uh, maybe we dive in wave one. Um, I would like to see you know, a break of that uh, wave A high. So that comes in at 34,760. Obviously, all this is blown out of the water if we do break to a new high. So, hey. Oh, it's a pinch of salt right now, I suppose. Um, the, the critical low, obviously, for wave three is at 33,950, uh, 33, call, uh, call it 34,000. If we break 34 again, um, we will be uh, looking, I think, pretty solidly into a third of a third wave down. So let's see how that goes next week. Gold, let's move on. Let's see what is happening in gold. Um, a little bit brighter. We're, we're looking maybe, 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 baby. Um, the four hour count here is, uh, I'll just update this a little bit. Uh, hold with me there a second. It looks like, obviously I'm, I'm at the moment I'm going with this fourth wave triangle. So if this actual count here is correct, then uh, this week, uh, or let's say if we build a higher low here, it'll probably be uh, as good a, a position to get into gold as is going to develop um, because if we get a wave D and an E that will just create a higher low above um, this wave C level here that is to say if this is the low of wave C so well, we're gonna have to um, wait and see on that one there's every chance as well that we are just topping out a B wave before we fall into a C wave so um, at the moment that's what I'm going with on the um, on the hourly count that we will know, uh, we will know that early next week, uh, without a doubt. Um, so, I think either way, no matter how this pans out, I think overall in gold we're going to still drift, you know, if this is a fourth wave triangle, we're going to still drift sideways for another month or so before, as this triangle fills out, uh, and then maybe next year will be, uh, early next year, January, we'll be looking at, uh, maybe February, we'll be looking at um, a rally beginning in wave five. Uh, okay, so here is uh, the hourly count. Mm, I did, I was working with a triangle count for wave B early this week. We did spike lower, and uh, then we retraced all of that rally uh, more or less yesterday. So um, the triangle wave B was ruled out. Uh, here is my, well, I suppose, the most most fitting. It's not that I love it or anything like that. This this short term count, the the action here is so hard to um, account for uh, that you know it's uh, it's it's becoming as it has been over the last year. I suppose is the gold market is an enigma, and it just wants to grind sideways to nowhere forever. It seems. Um, at the moment, I'm looking at five waves down in wave A. So one, two, uh, extension wave three, wave four up in three waves, and then wave five came in what seems to be uh, an end ending diagonal. So wave one, two, three, four, and five. Um, off that low, we just, that was uh, early December, we just basically went sideways for the last two weeks. So uh, what's the a possibility is that we have an expanded flat wave B. So we've got wave A up, three down in wave B, and then five wave rally in wave C. Don't be surprised to see this reverse today, um, as seems to be uh, the trend over the last while. We've uh, had spikes higher, spike lower, spike higher, spike lower. So, you know, don't be surprised. Uh, also, the fact that we're coming into that uh, territory of the previous fourth wave, you know, we've topped out short term momentum uh, on the uh, for our account, we, we still have a little bit of upside, I suppose, in momentum. If that's going to carry through, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but if the short-term count is correct, then we will see another decline, probably down towards uh, about 1700 to complete uh, wave C. Now, here's the trick. If this count is correct, then a low in this wave C will be probably the best um, buying point for gold that you're likely to see in the next couple of years. Um, so three waves down, complete wave C, then we'll go up in wave D and down in wave E. So we'll still form a higher low and then rally um, into the middle of next year and beyond. So uh, a C wave low will be a very interesting point in terms of the uh, long -term potential, longer term potential in gold. Okay, let's move on. This is a crude oil count. I am looking at, uh, let's see, what am I looking at? <laughs> I am looking at, let's see what I'm looking at. Okay, 
five waves down. I don't know whether to count this as wave one um, at one higher degree, as I am, uh, as I point out there. Let's see. Actually, go out to uh, the daily count here. If we're topped out in wave B, which is a possibility, uh, then we would expect a long-term decline in wave C. Now, if we are declining in wave C, then um, this probably spells an end to your bull market in general, uh, in all risk assets, uh, because you know the actual real economy is uh, kind of spluttering at the moment, and you know if you really want to. Um, if you want my two cents on that, which you probably don't, but I'm going to give you my two cents on that. Uh, what happened last year is the world binged on debt. And that has taken, we we basically spent, what was it, 30% of, of GDP in, you know, extra debt across the world, or maybe even more, who knows what, what sort of amount of shadow banking debt and, and, you know, basic leverage that came into the system on top of that. But governments basically splurged about 20 or 30% of, of GDP um, back into the economy in free giveaways. Uh, what happened? People people binged on it, basically. And that's what happened. It didn't go into productive, uh, well, I suppose if, if, you know, if you bought a new couch, a couch or a sofa, you know, as you might call it, then there was a certain element of productivity there, but um, most, you know, a lot of it just went into leisure, basically <laughs> buying, you know, leisure products or more uh, a fancier iPhone or a fancier uh, TV gaming system. That's basically what happened over the last year. Um, and, uh, you know, some people bought sofas. <laughs> that definitely happened. Uh, it wasn't tied to any productivity. It was basically a, a binge on debt. The markets ramped on it, this debt binge. And now crude oil is selling off, uh, and it's selling off quite impulsively. So this this splurge of debt that came into the system uh, seems to have kind of worked its way through. Um, we had a huge buildup in, um, uh, or let's say, sh uh, let's say, international shipping problems so uh, all this demand came in from companies uh, from people and companies were shut down and there was no way to ship this uh the ship the product and obviously the product is coming through now and don't do not be surprised to hear this mass inflation story which happened on the back of a debt splurge binge turn into a deflation story next year because in 2020 it was a deflation story in 2021 it was an inflation story and now it's turning over again so do not be surprised to see you know oil collapse and a lot of risk assets collapse as well okay that was enough on my two cents uh, that was about 15 cents i want change from that okay so i i don't know whether this is a wave one down at one larger degree or a wave one down at a one lower degree there um, for the sake of the count, it doesn't really matter uh, because the, the pattern itself does not change. Okay, so this week I'm looking at a five-wave um, pattern complete down in wave one in green. What seems to have uh, developed off that is three waves up in wave A, then three down in wave B. A possibility that we are, uh, we are already completed in wave B here. I was looking at a lower high for wave B. That's not completely ruled out yet, but... Um, the action yesterday uh, saw a reasonable five wave move higher again. So that could be wave one of C. Now, if we hold this higher low uh, in wave two, if we hold above, let's say that 60, if we hold about se above $70 today, I think next week we will probably see a reversal higher again in wave three of C. So we are grinding higher in a uh, three wave pattern to complete overall another lower high uh, in wave two. And then I think we'll turn down in wave three again. Uh, that's my um, two cents on crude oil. I've given you a lot of two cents today. Okay, uh, we pushed out to a new high yesterday in the S&P, and then we broke down lower again. Um, well, we haven't broken to a, a new weekly low, but um, interesting how that happened. We, we pushed to a, a new all-time high and then moved rapidly, impulsively lower off that again. No. A lot of disbelief, I think, internally. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying that uh, we don't push to a new high again. I, I really don't know that. Uh, it seems to be 
Um, the animal spirit seems to be impossible to kill here. Someone should just get out the shotgun and, and take this animal out of its misery. Um, the overall, we're 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 still uh, the larger pattern is still pointing to a long term extreme high developing or complete right now. Uh, we did have um, the recent decline was more corrective than impulsive, and I was amusing that as it was happening because it, the the amount of overlap that happened in uh, the S&P did not actually materialize in the Dow at all. We had uh, a clearer five-wave pattern down in the Dow um, and hence the reason why I'm still, you know, uh, cautiously optimistic or maybe in my um, parlance I should be saying cost me cautiously pessimistic. <laughs> I'm cautiously pessimistic on the Dow uh, and the stock market in general forever. Okay, uh, but in general, I mean, this is the, the worst time. This will prove to be the worst time in history to ever get into the stock market. I know that for sure, for certain, for sure. Uh, okay, and it's probably the best time ever to get into cash or, you know, uh, precious metals. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, back to the uh, S&P. We had a WXY triple combination correction, wave four, one, two, rally into wave three. Didn't quite make a new high. I was actually half thinking that we had a, a failed fifth wave um, this week. Oh, you know, it was it's a it's a messy count, but um, I actually haven't seen one for a while, to be honest. Uh, so interesting. We did not break uh, the wave one high. So we we came down in wave four. We didn't break the wave one high. Uh, internally uh, within the rally so that was 45 66 um and we rallied impulsively yesterday again broke out to a new high uh, or sorry we rallied impulsively on wednesday broke out to a new high on thursday and immediately came down again um are we seeing you know the development we're definitely we're definitely rounding off the top of this rally anyway i mean we've gone basically gone nowhere um since early november uh, it's gone sideways uh, we're actually lower uh, from the highs early November, um, so you know you could probably you could probably call this an orthodox topping kind of pattern again. We will see. We will see. Uh, left shoulder head. Maybe we build a right shoulder. I'm not going to call that right now. It'll all depend on the early action next week. So let's see if we if we decline again and uh, <laughs> this animal finally dies. Okay. Let's get into... I'm going to get censored on YouTube for saying an animal died, I bet. Uh, okay. Uh, here is silver. This is a four-hour count. It was so darn close uh, to breaking this bullish pattern this week that, you know, I, you could flip a coin on it. It was, um, it was just <laughs> taking my breath away watching it happen. It, it looks so much like a um a, a robotic rally basically off what's happened off the low here uh we came i think within two cents uh on the cash of on the spot of uh breaking to a new low so that was uh i think it was what was it 2141 and that was 2143 or something like that um <clears throat> with it was it was about two cents between the two lows here you know that really doesn't happen naturally uh so there's a lot of i'm not going to say it's it's not manipulation because it's not it's it's just robotic trading uh you know pick a low make it a buying point you know that type of thing um it, <laughs> it seems to be you know btfd everywhere uh i am not convinced just yet um that this is the final low but you know we've had a rally we will have to see if this holds uh, i have been looking for this wave three to to begin uh what seems to be forever in a day now but it hasn't um hasn't materialized yet so i'm going to give a chance to, for this uh this spike higher off the low to develop and let's see if we get a, an impulsive pattern off it possibility that we are uh let's see if we get a one two high and a larger one too high so it'll be a series of of uh, measures here to kind of build confidence uh, in this wave count again. We have that 21, uh, I think it's 41 on, on the spot, that must hold um, level. If we break that, then we are going to break down, I think, towards uh, 
probably somewhere around eighteen dollars again. Um, there is obviously you know an alternate pattern here and the alternate pattern suggests that we do go lower again and maybe in a bigger way um so tentatively holding my kind of fingers crossed on this one uh, but we'll see if gold is going to go sideways uh, there's no reason to really really believe that uh we're going to see a massive rally in silver you know it might be it might be a case of just a base building for the next uh, month or so. If that's the case, well, you know, so be it, so be it. We could still base build and be building towards a rally in the third wave. So I can't count that out either. Um, the only the only real concrete thing I can say is that uh, as long as twenty one forty holds or twenty one forty one, we are still on for the bullish count. If it breaks, then we are going to break down probably towards eighteen uh, dollars. Okay, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, it seems to be developing a um, impulsive move down, possibly into a third wave. Uh, maybe this could this you know this gap lower could have been a third of a third. Uh, we have again you know off an all time high, oh, sixty eight thousand. We're down to forty. We've we've lost twenty thousand dollars in this you know amazing of most amazing and stable currencies that has ever existed. <laughs> on planet earth you know uh if the dollar had lost you know uh in the space of let's say uh november 10th of november the all-time high and now we're we're at uh the 17th of december so uh, five six weeks if the dollar had lost uh 20 percent of its or 25 percent of its value in six weeks there would be screams from uh, every corner of the world. <laughs> so uh, just don't expect Bitcoin to take over uh, anytime soon. Uh, ever, actually, I think, to be quite honest. Uh, okay, so it looks like we have a five-way pattern. I know I'm going to get screams now in the comments from that. But, you know, so be it. I live on the edge. Okay. Uh, a possible one, too and um, maybe a third wave um, decline. We do have a reasonable five wave pattern down in uh, into wave one in green. Now, we could also say that this is wave one and two, wave one, two, three, and then we're, we're developing a fourth of a third wave. Um, mm, yeah, but for the moment, I'm, I, I'm, I'm reasonably... Um, reasonably confident in this count as long as um we we continue to build towards the downside then we, we're probably approaching a third wave low um the other way of viewing this right now would be uh, depending on how this correction goes maybe we already have the, the third wave low in place possibly and maybe we're going to build a fourth wave low here a fourth wave lower high as long as i would say as long as we hold below, let's actually as long as we we hold below the the correction after the gap, let's say forty, let's say fifty, fifty one nine hundred. Um, so I, I'm going to say this fourth wave here. So as as long as fifty seven hundred uh, holds, uh, we should be clear to move lower, maybe into a fifth wave or maybe into this fifth of a third wave. Uh, it's the the book is open on that one. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I want to go to move to the Nasdaq uh, because I thought that was quite interesting. The pattern this week, um, m I, I'm I'm not entirely certain about this uh, wedge um, impulse wedge here uh, to begin. So that'd be like a a leading diagonal uh, wave one. It does count that way. I mean, we've got wave one two three four and five um possible leading diagonal but what is pretty uh interesting and and pretty certain uh, is a, an, a clear abc pattern up so we have uh, maybe a leading diagonal lower and then a pretty standard uh zigzag pattern uh, wave two to a lower high so we've got abc up uh in wave two and we saw a, a pretty immediate and impulsive decline. Um, maybe we've got wave one of wave three developing now. And maybe, 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 
maybe that's why there's so much ins insider selling happening <laughs> over the last month or so. You know, all time record high insider sell insider selling uh, going on right now. So just you know, uh, be cognizant of that. Um, forward projections are not looking as good in those companies. Obviously, if uh, you know executives are selling their, uh, you know, taking their options and selling them um, right now. Uh, we do have a possible one-two pattern off the top in the Nasdaq, so just keep that in mind. Um, this today and the next couple of days, if we if we only build a corrective lower high again, that does suggest that we're going to move down into the third wave. Um, okay, I think that is me done. And as always, I give you the the bad news in the markets, and I give you the good news for salvation. Um, this is where everybody clicks off. And those of you who stay on, you know, God bless you. Uh, maybe you're open to the idea that you do not have to move into eternity. Everyone's going to die. You know, I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen in the markets, but I can tell you exactly what's going to happen in your life. You're going to die and you're going to face eternity. And you will wake up after you die. You will wake up and you're going to wake up somewhere. It's going to be either, you know, in heaven or in hell. And you do not want to wake up in hell. Okay? Just... Um, Take my advice on that one. Uh, and, you know, the world is under the surface. The world is spinning out of control. You know, make your, make your eternity sure. Make your eternity sure. You know, I'm not sp spouting religion to you. I'm just giving you the opening up the idea of a relationship with your Savior who has taken your sin, already paid for it, and all that is asked of you is to declare, you know, who are you for? Are you for the God of this world, the devil, or are you for the God of creation? Jesus Christ. It's a war, you know. Don't you know that? You know, this life is a war. It's a spiritual war. And if you haven't felt that over the last year or so, well, maybe your eyes aren't open. Get on the right side of the long-term spiritual war. Declare for the eventual victor, Jesus Christ. That's it. And you're done. I'll see you in heaven. <laughs> you know, I'm not, uh, again, I always say this, I'm not selling you religion. I'm selling, I'm giving you the, 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 the road to a relationship with your creator. Okay. That's me. That's me done. Hey, check out the website. Uh, I'll see you tonight for the update, everybody on the website, and I will see you, everybody, everybody else, I'll see you in YouTube land. Or, you know, come along and get the nightly updates. All right, God bless, bye-bye, have a great weekend, happy Christmas if I don't see you. Um, bye-bye.